Good afternoon and welcome to the seventh Botanical University Challenge from me, Jonathan Mitchley, Dr. M, from John Warren and from our chair for today, Sarah Dalrymple. Uh, I'm just going to share a few slides with you just by way of introduction uh, and to give you a feel for how it's going to run today. Good afternoon and welcome to the seventh Botanical University Challenge from me, Jonathan Mitchley, Dr. M, from John Warren. Okay, so I, I say this is the today, Sarah Dalrymple. Botanical University Challenge. Uh, I'm just going to share a few slides with you just so by way of introduction. And we have a wonderful to feel 28 for teams it's uh, going to run today. today. And we all, we Good afternoon. Them. Uh, we'll we'll see them shortly, uh, but also we welcome our audience. Um, and based on our previous years, we imagine we have a, an audience from um, all across the country, all across uh, the UK, Ireland, and the world. Um, in case you don't know, audience, you can actually follow the QR code, and you can download play along sheets from our uh, website. Getting the slides moving on. Okay, so um, we have uh, the program for you here. We've got um, five rounds of multiple choice questions. Each round is 10 questions. And these are the, the approximate timings that we um, uh, envisage. Uh, we've had we've been running this a few years now online, so um, we hope these timings are, are reasonably accurate, but that's uh, more or less what you can expect. We're going to take a break after round three and the results ceremony at around 4.30. We have 28 teams competing. This year, because of the large number of teams, this is a record number, we're actually running the online rounds over three consecutive Wednesdays. So today, uh, next week and the week after, um, and uh, 16 teams uh, will go through from today's 28 uh, to compete in the second round next week. And eight of those teams will go into the quarterfinals um, uh, the following week. We have loads of lovely prizes. Um, and we'll tell you more about the prizes um, next week. But for now, um, just to say... Um, we have uh, initiated last year the, the, the Sid Thomas Trophy, a uh, beautiful um, handcrafted wooden trophy, uh, which is held by the Oxford University team, the winners for last year. Um, and so the winners and uh, the eventual winners this year will hold this trophy for um, a year, proudly. Um, we, as I say, have plenty of, of, of wonderful prizes for, for our winners, but for all of you, for all of our student participants, um, we have the second Student Botany Festival. Last year, we held a, uh, the first Botany Festival at the University of Nottingham, had a fantastic time there. Um, this year, we held at the University of Oxford. Um, and again, we've upped uh, the ante here. We have three days of activities. So we have the, the uh, semifinals and the finals. Um, on Wednesday the 28th, uh, but then we have two days of, of, of wonderful botanical activities. Um, well, John Warren will tell you more about this at the end um, um, after, we, um, after we've com com completed today's uh, competition. But we are very grateful to an, um, a wide range of funders um, for helping us uh, raise the, the necessary uh, money to, to run this festival. All participants today, uh, including reserves, will have a free pass to this, this wonderful event. We're very grateful to the Oxford Botanic Garden and Arboretum for their um, continued support in, in developing this program. Um, also, um, uh, following from last year's successful um, art competition, we have an art and photography competition. This is a student-led competition. Um, submission is in June. Uh, more information um, will come on this after the on online rounds have been uh, com completed. Um, as previous years, our, our, our wonderful student teams have come up with some really original uh, team names. Um, and this year, um, uh, uh, from an idea of, jo of John Warren's, we've asked um, the student teams to compose limericks 
And I'm delighted to say we've had a large number of, of submissions of limericks. So we've got two competitions going. The QR codes will take you there and this will be open for the next weeks. Um, so uh, have, a, have a look at the team names, have a look at the limericks. There's actually a video of the limericks on our, our YouTube uh, channel. Um, so check all those out, decide what you think are the best, most innovative, most amusing, um, and vote um, in the competition. Um, there will be the results will be announced at the Oxford uh, Festival. Okay, so without further ado, um, I'm going to ask the tech team to bring on our teams uh, one by one, just uh, a quick wave from them, but just so that you can appreciate um, our lovely teams uh, and the team names as we go through. So I will stop sharing my screen um, and we will uh, meet the teams. Once we've met the teams, we're going to take a, a team photograph and then we will introduce our chair for today. Oh, yeah, I have to introduce. Oh, I just can't. I can't see them. OK, sorry. I'm supposed to be introducing the teams. Uh, if anything goes wrong, I'm telling you the challenge. It's always me. Um, OK, I thought it was all sorted. So no, team number one. Absolutely. University of Galway, Plantaholic Anonymous. I'm delighted to welcome you. Yes, give us a wave. That's lovely. That's lovely. Um, so all the best. Um, and uh, team number two. Um, also from uh, Ireland is the University College Dublin, House of the Rhizome Sun. Lovely. Good to see you. Uh, team number three, uh, Edge Hill University. This is one of the two teams who have competed in every Botanical University Challenge since we started. This is Sedge Hill from Edge Hill University. A, a lovely welcome to you. Okay. Uh, team number four is RHS. Uh, the Rosemore Rookies, RHS have competed before. This time, um, I think all the team are from, from Rosemore. So welcome. Um, and then we have team number five, University of Plymouth, the Plymouth Pairs. Lovely to see you. All the best. Team number six, um, and without any bias whatsoever, I'm delighted to introduce the University of Reading team. Stay men to that. Hello. And you, this is the second team, Reading, who've, who've competed every, every time that Botanical University Challenge has run since we started back in 2016. Team uh, number seven, we go to Wales. Aberystwyth University, go with the phloem. I don't like that name. Go with the phloem. Welcome. Um, team number eight, University of Manchester, the Aconite Acolytes. Welcome. Hello, welcome. Good luck. Then uh, back to University of Cambridge, we've got the Bax Buttercup. So last year's runners up, University of Cambridge, everything to play for this year. Welcome. Um, and new um, to Botanical University Challenge, I'm delighted to welcome Oxford Brooks University, the Ragworths. So welcome to Botanical University Challenge. Enjoy your first uh, contest with us. Then to the University of Bristol, um, Sorbrainus bristoliensis. I'm liking that species name. Um, hopefully not too much of a sore brain, um, maybe celebrating um, uh, a bit later on. Okay, Team 12, um, Eden Project University Centre, the Rhizomaniacs. Welcome, welcome, Eden. Um, team 13, over to Ireland again, Trinity College Dublin, the Trinity Tristerix. Lovely to see you. <laughs> then uh, halfway, uh, uh, team 14, University of Portsmouth, another team, um, uh, first time uh, competing here, the Portatoes. So welcome to Botanical University Challenge. Hope you have a, a fun time and a successful time. Welcome. Then to London, Imperial College London, Serial Killers. 
difficult to say that name without a smile. Imperial College, where are you? There, there, I hope. Ben, 16, University of Aberdeen. Um, the Aberdeen Alders, welcome back. And welcome, Scotland. Then um, up to the University, uh, sorry, Durham University, Durham Rock Roses. Great to see you again, Durham. Lovely, lovely. All the best. Um, and then to the University of Oxford, so the home of, of our um, uh, Botany Festival that we held in August and last year's um, champions, um, University of Oxford, the Rogue Arums. Welcome. Um, and then to the Royal Botanic Gardens queue. Stolon victory. Gotta love a stolon. Welcome, welcome. Um, and then um, another first time team back up to Scotland, the Royal Botanic Garden, Edinburgh. So we've had Edinburgh University competing before, but this is the first time the Botanic Garden, Edinburgh and Moss Hysteria. What's not to love about that name? Love my briar fights. Hello and welcome. Have a lovely time. Uh, then University of York, take it or leave it. <laughs> and I, I hope you'll be able to do all of those things. Welcome, University of York. Um, and uh, team 22, team number 22 is another um, first time team. This is Harper Adams University, the Harper Hemlocks. Welcome. Welcome to you and, and have a lovely time. So back up to Scotland, this time the University of Edinburgh, Leaf, Laugh, Love. Yes, I can hear the cheers. I can hear all this all this virtual applause that I hope we're getting uh, around the way. And I hope we do, do, do contribute audience to the chat, um, uh, root for your, your, your favorite teams and all the teams. Uh, team 24, Anglia Ruskin. So another uh, first time team for Botanical University Challenge. The Ruskin Roses, welcome. I'm hoping this is going fine because I'm not seeing everything on my screen, but I'm assuming it's going fine. So welcome, we're on to team 25, the University of Dundee, the Dundee Daylilies, welcome. Yes, lovely, see you there, the city behind you, welcome. Um, down to University of Southampton, grow a pair. Welcome, Southampton. Lovely to see you. And then uh, up to Lancaster University, Lancaster Floral Fanatics. Lovely to see you. Yeah, nice big wave, nice big virtual cheer for Lancaster University. And last but not by no means uh, least, Team 28, magnificent 28 teams. This is University of Nottingham, uh, where we held the festival, so previous winners. Um, the Merry Stems. Welcome, the Merry Stems. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, uh, I think without further ado, um, I would like uh, now um, to have a team photograph. Uh, is that possible? Good. So we want all the teams shown on the screen and I'll leave my tech team to sort this. This is slightly technically tricky because as you will be noticing the audience, the, the teams are going in and out, uh, sort of ghostly like. Um, so we'll do our best to take a few screenshots um, so that we can get the best one for use. Um, okay, so if you could try, I don't know if it's possible teams, if you can try and make sure that at least some of you are visible, ideally all of you. Some of you are quite stable, some of you are moving in and out. Uh, I hope Seb is going to do some screenshots. That's my hope, because um, I can't do two things at once. I can't possibly sit here and talk and um, do stuff as well. Oh, I think I did promise I would. Um, maybe I'll hang on. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not great at technical stuff. So if I press something, it's bound to it all go wrong. So yeah, OK, teams. So what we're going to need to do is have, because Seb is going to have to use several screens. So we're going to need you to wave for a while, okay? So I'm going to do a three, two, one wave. 
and I'm assuming that Seb is 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 hearing me. We'll all wave, um, and uh, then we'll take a few screenshots, and hopefully there's something that we can use um, for for our publicity. So we've got 28 amazing teams here, um, and now is the time for you to give us a little wave. Welcome. So keep waving. I was gonna. I, I said I'd say three, two, one, but three, two, one. So some waving. Keep it going. Keep it going. Perhaps. And I hope, Seb, I hope my tech team will be communicating with Seb that there's some screen uh, capturing going on. Fantastic. So keep doing this, and I'll get Seb to tell me when he's finished. Oh, they're done. Oh, I, I like it to go on a bit long. Okay, all done. Thank you for that. Uh, I, I imagine now you can turn your cameras off, prepare yourselves, um, and our next... Um, uh, I now got to call on, on John Warren to uh, introduce our chair. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Botanical University 2024. 20, uh, it's my great privilege to introduce our chair for this afternoon, who's going to be in the questions of master's seat, asking you all these devilishly uh, tricky questions. So we've, we've got Dr. Sarah Dalrymple from John Moores University, where she's a uh, senior lecturer there in uh, Reader, I think, uh, in conservation uh, ecology. And she's a world expert on things like uh, cow wheat, melon pyrons. And she's done some amazing work on uh, conservation ecology of trans uh, locating plants and the impacts of climate change. And quite sort of relevant to today, she's the chair of skills and training committee for the BSBI. So with a little bit of background for Sarah, I'm going to hand over to her and invite her just to tell us a little bit about what inspires her to get interested in plants before she starts asking you these, these tricky questions. Over to you, Sarah. Yeah, thanks ever so much for having me. Um, for the newbie teams that are on at the moment, I'm also a newbie to uh, chairing, being the quiz master, so I'll, I'll do my best. The thing I'm most nervous about is getting all the the scientific names right but I might actually get some of the English words wrong so that might, <laughs> might be more embarrassing Um, I uh, came to plants through just as a kid really being really interested in in plants and then also being quite interested in in environmentalism so as a teenager in the 90s um, I wanted to chain myself to trees and be like a you know swampy type a lot of you are far too young to know who swampy is but it was like a an eco saboteur uh, my mum said, well, why don't you just go to uni instead? <laughs> so I did. And I went to study environmental science at University of Bradford. Um, and that has a really strong um, emphasis on plant ecology. So I was taught by lots of great um, vascular plant and lichen specialists at Bradford. And then I went to Aberdeen, but Aberdeen, no favouritism today. Uh, so that was my PhD. Um, and then, yeah, like as John says, I, I've been uh, really, you know, sort of driven by conservation so I'm not the greatest botanist I'm glad I'm not answering the questions today because I'm, I'm not sure how many of them I get right but I am absolutely plant mad plant, plant obsessed that's all I talk about all I doodle um and uh yeah it's um it's such a fantastic thing to see so many teams on BUC today uh for the knockout rounds um good luck to all of you and I hope that you know that the plant obsessives there I hope you go out and help with plant conservation in the future or become taxonomists and systematists and all those sorts of things because we need everyone, you know, at the all hands at the pump to make sure that we we protect plants into the future. Um, and, yeah, that's my motivation, really. Um, so I just, uh, yeah, hope that everyone can um, have a really good time this afternoon. Best of luck to all of you. Um, and I think we can now go towards officially opening the quiz. Right, so in front of you, you should see your screens teams with the questions on it. So I'm going to read out the questions um, and with the answers, and then you'll have 30 seconds to answer each question. So our first one is just a warm up. Um, welcome to day one of BC 2024 round one. Please select an answer and submit while we um, while the teams are joining. We've got 27 of the students have answered, so we can go through uh, to us. Oh, it says it's, we might have some uh, problems with some of the teams viewing it. Um, but we've got answers for this warm up question. So.
so we, the teams have been asked to say whether they are unbelievable. Everyone remain calm. Oh my God, you're ridiculous. I'm so excited that I wet my plants. Or are you chill? Um, and we're just going to go to answering the questions. Yes, so this one's just for fun. So this is just the warm up. And I think we have all the answers we need for that now, just to check. So I think I think we're waiting for the, the the next question to load. So for those of you viewing on YouTube, we've got this very um, high tech system where the teams all get to submit their answers. Um, as with anything high tech, then it's not always the easiest thing to be using. So we've got lots of fantastic people in the background who are um, getting the, the the system to work. Um, and I think we'll go to the next. So I think we're carrying on now with all the teams joined in. So that's good. We don't want to leave anybody out. Um, and we're now going to go to the, the first proper question. Okay. So which of these fruits used to be commonly known as love apple? Is it A, mango, B, passion fruit, C, persimmon, D, pomegranate, or E, tomato. And so you've got 30 seconds on the clock. Um, I didn't know the answer to this one, to be honest. <laughs> so uh, hopefully the, there's lots of more knowledgeable people in the teams that can answer this one. And I can see that the answers are trickling in. We've got about well, nine seconds to go now, so we're almost there before we go to the next question. So now on to the question two. Which of Shakespeare's romance-themed plays includes the line, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet? Is it A, as you like it, B, love's labour's lost, C, much to do about nothing, D, Romeo and Juliet, or E, Twelfth Night? And your 30 seconds has started. So I've got an A-level in English literature, so that should help with this one, you'd think, wouldn't you? <laughs> it's an odd A-level to have for a, for a botanist, but it's quite handy sometimes. Uh, if you're playing at home, you might know this as well, because this is more of a general knowledge one. So please join in. I've got a few seconds left before we go to the next question, and time's up. Okay, question three. What is the scientific name of love in a mist? Is it Ranunculus acris, Nigella lawsonii, Nigella damsina, Amoria scotica, or Amaranthus cordatus? And your 30 seconds starts now. It's such a gorgeous plant. My grandma used to grow it and she's got little tubs with a handwriting on that says love in a mist on a little plastic tub. So it's Fond memories for, for me from uh, growing up in Sheffield. So 10 seconds left. Last couple of seconds, and then we can go to the next question. Valentine's Day, very topical, is traditionally associated with hearts. Which of the following plants has strongly heart-shaped leaves and is now sold as a Valentine's gift? Is it A, Rosa Mundi, B, Sedum Morganium, C, Streptocarpus saxorum, D, Hibiscus rosa sinensis, or E, Hoya kerii? And the, the clock started. There's quite a range of different species in there. So if you know your heart-shaped leaves, then you can uh, work that out. Maybe if you didn't know it already from, from looking at the, the genus of the plants. It's always a uh, botanist's best skill is process of elimination. <laughs> and we're almost closed for this, for this question four. 
I think, I think everyone got their answers in, so that's good. Right, question five. Which of the following species epithets might be best used to describe a plant with heart-shaped leaves? Is it A, glomerata, B, avata, C, cordata, D, baccata, or E, cardiata? So again, 30 seconds on the clock. Play at home if you if you can guess what they are. I'm trying to train my kids uh, to, to know all these uh, scientific names. So they might be able to do a couple of these. Uh, from treasure hunts and things that we do at home. Uh, so just a few seconds left for this one. Not quite all the teams. The last couple we need. Oh, there we go. We've got all the teams in. Fantastic. So now we can go to question six. Chocolate is the second most popular gift on St. Valentine's Day. Which of the following are not produced by the human body in response to eating chocolate? Is it A, adrenaline, B, endorphins, C, serotonin, D, dopamine, E, oxytocin. So which one is not produced by the human body in response to eating chocolate? So I hope everyone got some chocolate today. I hope you all got your Valentine's cards. <laughs> not that we buy into it because it's like a capitalist construct, isn't it? But anyway... <laughs> Okay, so yep, all, all teams answered that one again, so that's great. So on to question seven. Some cacao plants are obligate outbreeders requiring pollination, but what pollinates the abroma cacao? Is it A, bees, B, wasps, C, moths, D, midges, or E, hummingbirds? So the, the, the Scottish teams, you'll know about midges, won't you? <laughs> had to do a lot of field work with a lot of midges when I was at Aberdeen. So, so about halfway through this question. People are having to think about this. This is a slower one to get answered because it's about invertebrates, so that's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're going to go to the next question. Oh, yeah, not quite. Oh, not quite everyone answered that one. So question eight. According to the 16th century English historian John Fox, St. Valentine was buried in the church of Praxedes in Rome. What tree was planted next to his grave? Is it A, the pomegranate, B, fig, C, red rhododendron, D, pink, almond, or E, olive? And off you go. So which tree? Oh, there we go. Um, beautiful picture from Rome. So which tree was um, planted next to his grave? The more cultured of you might know, I, I have no clue at all. <laughs> Last few seconds. And then on to question nine. Roses are red, but what colour are viola lactea flowers? Are they A, blue, B, violet to purple, C, yellow to cream, D, white to pale lilac, and E, purple to yellow. So which one of those is the Viola Lactea flowers? Roses aren't all red, as we know. <laughs> and the red roses are more expensive than these ones. But we're talking about Viola just now. So let's see if people know what the coloration of the Viola flowers that we're talking about today are. Five seconds left on the clock, last few answers. Okay, great. And for question 10, uh, which poet wrote the poem titled A Red, Red Rose? Was it A, Robert Browning, B, Christina Rossetti, C, Lord Byron, D, Robert Burns, or E, Percy Bysshe Shelley? So you have... 30 seconds again for this final question of round one. And again, it's quite literature focused, isn't it? So you need to be cultured, I think, to, to do well in this round. And last few seconds, see so you can get their last answers in. 
yes, all the teams have answered. Fantastic. So, um, at the end of now we're at the end of round one. Um, there's quite a bit of culture in there. I think it's really important that as uh, plant um people, we obviously there's the art competition and there's poetry and literature and things like that. And I think it's really important when you're trying to connect with people who maybe aren't plant obsessives, that you actually are able to link with some of the cultural links of plants, make people see what's in front of them half the time, you know, and when they just sort of walk past the weeds or whatever, make them appreciate that from maybe some other points of view than, than the science um, side of things. Um, so I think this sort of like um, outreach event with the art competition, everything is really fantastic for that. It really gets people excited. And when people see that you're enthusiastic about things, it helps spread the plant word, doesn't it? So, um, yeah, so uh, I think we're just waiting now for the leaderboard. And what we'll do at the end of each round is have the leaderboards come up so you can track your progress teams. Um, you might not want to look if you feel like you didn't do so well. But... Okay, so we're going to go to the answers now. Right. Um, so I'm not working the, the mouse, by the way. Um, we've got a team in the background. Hannah's working the mouse. So the answer to the, the love apple question was tomato. And 21% of the teams got that right. So congratulations, not pomegranate. For question two, the Shakespeare, uh, uh, oh, well, that's much better. Uh, Romeo and Juliet, a lot of people knew the, the rose by any other name quote. So well done on that. If you got D for question two. For question three, it's Nigella Damascena, not Nigella Lawsonii. Um, uh, so <laughs> I think that was a sort of deliberate slight joke. But well done for the 57% that got that one right. Uh, Valentine's Day, um, it's Hoya Kerii, which is 75% of people got that right. So well done, because I wouldn't be honest. Uh, for question five, which is best to use for heart-shaped, and that's uh, Cordata, with the sort of the lobed leaves leading up to the stem, that is. So Question six, we're on chocolate, um, and it's adrenaline is not produced by the human body. Um, maybe if somebody's like stealing it from you, you'd get some adrenaline as you try to get it back, but the other things are, uh, are the ones that are produced by chocolate. Okay, so what pollinates the abroma cacao? It's midges, there we go. So midges do have a use, they're not just irritants <laughs> so that's a, a good thing we need to protect the midges question eight uh what tree oh ve wow so only four percent got this right i wouldn't have got it right so um it's the pink almond for question eight that was planted next to um st valentine and um, for roses are red what color of viola lactea violet to purple nobody got that right goodness me okay well we're all in good company then aren't we? <laughs> if we if we got that one wrong and finally for question 10 what poet wrote the poem a red red rose and the answer is of course robert burns or rabbi burns as they call him up north so and um, 39 percent if you got that right so fantastic so that's the answer so you probably have a bit of an indication of how you're doing already um, we're going to go to the leaderboard now. Um, okay, so we're going to have to make an adjustment. The last question was wrong. The pale dog violet is, in fact, white to lilac, isn't it? Yeah, I thought that. Yeah, I don't know how that slipped through. I don't know how that slipped through, but we need to sort of see if we can adjust that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this happens sometimes. Uh, yeah, uh, we might, we'll need to tweak that. And actually, most of the teams got it right. So, we, yeah, we don't uh, want to upset says, people. <laughs> Hannah says that will be sorted. So, um, yeah, the, these okay. things are sent to test us. But, but thanks very much. 
I, I just wanted to say I love that round. Uh, obviously, I, I forgot to to welcome everyone to Valentine's Day because Botanical University Challenge is more important than Valentine's Day. <laughs> but welcome to Valentine's Day. And uh, uh, that first round were obviously Valentine themed and uh, fascinating. We should say as well that there aren't any more Valentine's questions. So if you're not feeling very romantic and you feel you didn't do very well on the sort of more arty questions there, then he, yeah, no more Valentine's after that until you till this evening. Yeah, so Sarah, that was your first uh, your first experience of Botanical University Challenge round. How was that for you? That was good. That was lovely. Um, I like seeing all the answers come in and I, I really feel for the teams, you know, when there's the last few seconds and I can see that not all the teams have answered yet and there's probably panic all around the country. <laughs> like, quickly, which is the right answer? So, um, yeah, so well done for everybody for getting through that first round. Um, we can all relax into it a little bit more, hopefully, um, and go into round two. Now we're all on tender hooks, working out, waiting to find out who's in the lead. We need a drum roll for the, the leaderboard to come up, don't we? Yeah, this is all this is all calculated just to keep the tension rising. <laughs> but we are going to be uh, in possession of, of, of the scoreboard fairly soon. Okay. So if we if we're going to go to the leaderboard now, I think because of the last question, it, it may need to be amended, but people will know whether they got that last question right or not, won't they? And then that will be amended to their score. So, yeah. So I think one of the um, really opportune moments for plugging the Botanical Society for Britain Ireland is right now. Um, so as John said earlier, I'm the chair of the Skills and Training Committee. Um, and there's lots of different ways of getting involved in the BSBI. So if you're not already a member, then please do have a look at the website, work out how you can join. For students, um, which most of you are, um, you're eligible to um, go for funding from the BSBI. So if you didn't know that already, then you do now. Um, and we open funding for plant study grants to support botanical um, research projects. And there's also a research grant and there's also training grants. So do um, think about BSBI membership. Um, the grants aren't just open just to members, but they are sort of ring fenced in, in for prioritization to members. So please do bear that in mind if you're not already a member I've been a member for years and years and it's just such a great society to be part of, a real institution. Um, and we also have like the world's best data set of biological records for like, the whole world. And some Envious of them will be us. winning membership as a prize from yes. book this year. Yes, that's right. So, um, yeah, please do have a look at the BSBI's website and, and just make the most of all the resources and any sort of help that we can give you in your careers because that's what we're here for fantastic thank you sarah thanks um we we are still waiting for for, for, for the update we would have brought a few student a uh, few teams on to, to to have a chat to but um the tech team have got quite a lot on their hands at the moment so um uh, well we'll get this sorted and then uh, and then we'll be able to Yeah, I think um, we're waiting for a couple of the teams to yeah, join but... our online system. So that's what the pause is at the moment. Yeah, yeah, we're still waiting for two teams to join because we, we don't want to start um, the, the, the next round without all the teams on. So there are two teams still not on. Um, so if all the teams so, yeah, can make sure you've things. joined. Mm -hmm.
now it's just one team so we're almost there. almost there so i'd be interested to know actually those of you playing along um if you want if you haven't already i, I can't actually see the youtube chat but if you're playing along at home using with or without our play along sheets be interesting to see uh, how well you did in that in that round so you can put something in the in the youtube chat um and before very long we'll be we'll be up running again um Yeah, we're still waiting for for one team to to join the the uh, the, the the question software. Uh -huh. Just having a look at the chat on the YouTube um screen. I've got two screens going at the moment just to make my life extra hard. Um, so it's lovely to see people encouraging the different teams and getting behind the different teams to so keep doing that. There's even a zoologist watching. So welcome, zoologists. Everybody is welcome. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and lovely that you're getting involved. So thanks, zoology, Ben. Um, and there's an, there's an arts graduate. Welcome, Amanda. So that's great that you're online and having a look as well. Uh, we need, like I was saying before, we need lots of ways of getting the plant message out and the uh, artists are our best friend in that respect. Um, so, yeah, keep keep your messages going. It's really good for the teams to see that, you you know, you're getting behind them. And also that there's so much activity around um, Botanical University Challenge. So... We're still waiting for one team. Um, we, so that we don't leave anyone out. We are going to have to move on. It looks okay. like one team are not in. Um, and we've been looking at the chat. We can't see any any panic messages. Um, so uh, I think I think we are going to have to move on. Are we going to move on to round two or are we going to have the scoreboard? Yeah. Okay, we're okay. moving on to round two. Right, we'll fantastic. Two. Okay, so everybody focus. So we're going into round two. We've got another um, just for fun question. Um, so this is just to so that people can see what um, check that the things are working. So for the teams, they've been um, asked to to say whether it's uh, time to turn up the volume. If you can't beat them, join them. Can't you move any aster? Don't be ranunculous. I like that one. I'm going to remember that. Or kale, yeah. So this is just for fun. So how are you feeling at the moment, everybody, now that we're into round two? Great. Okay. So what is the name of this plant? And you'll get a picture of it in a second. Early spider orchid, Ophrys spergodes. Bee orchid, Ophrys apura. Late spider orchid, Ophrys fusiflora. Fly orchid, Ophrys insectifera, or early purple or orchid, Orchis muscular. Um, and there's your picture. You've got 20 seconds on the clock. Um, so we've got early spider, B, late spider, fly, or early purple. And you've got just eight seconds left to go. With everyone's answered now, so that's great. I'm going to go to the next question. What is the name of this plant? Is it Bog Asphodel, Narthesium ossifragum, Marsh Lousewort, Pedicularis palustris, Scottish Asphodel, Tifielda Priscilla, Goldenrod, Solidago virgaria, Marsh Fleewer, Tephrosis palustris? And here's your picture coming now. So, which of those is it? Bog asphodel, marsh lousewort, Scottish asphodel, golden rod, or marsh fleawort. 
And so we've got about half time left with those um, spikes of of lovely orangey yellow flowers that you saw in the picture. Which which plant is that? So on to the third question. Bog myrtle is a member of which of these plant families? Is it A, Ericaceae, B, Myrtaceae, C, Amaranthaceae, D, Myricaceae, or E, Rosaceae? So which family? And if you're um, not a botanist and you're listening in, um, the AC is the, the, it denotes the family name. So that, that's why we've got, they've got all the same ending to that word. So is it Ericaceae? Myrtaceae, Amaranthaceae, Myricaceae or Rosaceae. And we've got just a few seconds left, but quite a few teams haven't answered yet. Oh, it's uh, building up now. Three seconds, the last few. Oh, just got everyone in. Great. So what's the name of this plant? Marsh St. John's wort, Hypericum meloides, Crowberry and Petum nigrum, Cross-leaved Heath, Erica tetralix, Bog rosemary, Andromeda polifolia, cranberry, vaccinium, oxycocus. So, we, what's the name of this plant that we're about to see? So, marsh St. John's wort, crowberry, cross leaf teeth, bog rosemary, or cranberry. Uh, you don't get very long with the photo. Um, the photo disappears into a sort of small, like that's it, it's gone big again. Um, so you can see it uh, with a few of the leaves and the flowers. Okay. What's the name of this plant? Hare's tail cotton grass, Eriophorum vaginatum. Slender cotton grass, Eriophorum gracilae. Common cotton grass, Eriophorum angustifolium. Purple moor grass, Melinia carulia. Or matte grass, Nardus stricta. So which, which is... Which of these is the right answer? Is it hare's tail cotton grass, slender cotton grass, common cotton grass, purple moor grass, or matte grass? And there's, there's the picture made big, big again. With those lovely tufts on the, the top of the, the stem. I'm trying to describe them without giving any clues away, it's really hard. <laughs> so question six, what's the name of this plant? A, maidenhair fern, Adenatum radianum. B, green spleenwort, Asplenium viridi. C, walrus spleenwort, Asplenium rutum moraria. Maidenhair spleenwort, Asplenium trichomanes. Uh, or bird's nest fern, Asplenium antiquum. So which, which is the correct answer for this plant? What name would you give this in the field? I really wish I was better at ferns. Actually, it's it's one of the the uh, groups that I'd really like to improve at. So oh, nearly all. I all think I'm right. Excellent. Okay, and we're on to question seven. Which of the following is not oh, a common name for this plant? Oh. Cuckoo flower is, it is. lady smock. A is. cuckoo flower. B lady right. smock. C, I think pink milkmaids, is D, common pink bitter and E, mayflower. Yeah, okay. So, which of these is or not, or not a common name for this plant? So, so is it is it not cookie flower? Is it not lady smock? Not milkmaids? Not pink bittercress or not mayflower because this one's got a lot of common names depending where you are in the country or the world um but one of those isn't correct okay question eight what's the name of this plant is it a northern marsh orchid dactylorhiza purpurea b southern marsh orchid dactylorhiza protomissa c narrow-leaved marsh orchid dactylorhiza transduneroides D, bog orchid, hammerbia, paludosa, or E, early marsh orchid, dactylorhiza incarnata. It's got these uh, like amazing um, pinky flowers on with the coloration. 
So which of those do you think is the correct name for this species? We've got just a few seconds left. See the teams popping into the, the summary. Oh, yeah, we just got everybody answering that one. It's great. Okay, so question nine. Purple loose strife is in which of the following plant families? Is it A, Lythraceae, B, Onagraceae, C, Myrtaceae, D, Primulaceae, or E, Melastomataceae? So purple loose strife in this flower, uh, picture being pollinated by a lovely little bee. No points for knowing what the bee is. <laughs> Um, but yeah, tell us which of those family names is the correct one. Lythraceae, Onagraceae, Myrtaceae, Primulaceae or Melastomataceae. <laughs> We've just got a couple of seconds left. And then finally, not a vascular, which species of sphagnum is this? It's often described as looking like drowned kittens, which you can see in the photo. Is it sphagnum flexuosum, flexuous bog moss, sphagnum papillosum, papillose bog moss, sphagnum cuspidatum, feathery bog moss, sphagnum fuscum, rusty bog moss, or sphagnum lescurii, yellow peat moss? So if you don't know anything about sphagnums, you might just have to do it dip. But if you do know a bit about sphagnums, you'll know that they're actually zoned into different sort of levels of saturation in the bog pool. So it's they're quite cool indicators of like where you are in terms of, uh, you know, where the water table is relative to where the moss is growing. So okie dokie, we've got a few more seconds on that. Most of the teams have answered. Probably some panic about that because sphagnums are hard. And that's the end of round two. So fantastic. Um, we've got, we had quite a lot of just, well, like naming the plants there. So if you know a big range of plants, that's absolutely fantastic. If anybody's watching at home and um, they're a bit like, how would I ever know the name of that? Um, then my best tip is just repetition, to be honest. Um, so when I learned how to do botany, it was just through seeing the same things over and over again. Um, luckily, I had my PhD, so it was like three or four years to to do that. Um, and also going out with people that knew a good bit more than me and having them just tell me the names of things again and again and again. So if you are interested in botany, don't fear if you, if the books are pretty hard. Having said that, some of our um, team on the quiz today are um, uh, authors. John Warren leading it with Jonathan Mitchley on a, a brand new book called uh, Frustrating Flowers and Puzzling Plants all the other way around. It's really good. So I would recommend that. But yes. Thanks for the plug. The leaderboard's <laughs> up for the first round. Red, and both Reading and York uh, are in first place on nine points after the oh, first round. So that's pretty impressive. Round. Nine out of ten on that really tricky round. That is fantastic. Well done, Reading and York. You are very cultured, Reading and York. Well done. Um, so I think I think what we'll be doing now, yeah, is going to the answers. Is that yeah? Okay, so what's the name of this plant? Let's have a look. This is bee orchid, which 96% got right. Hooray for that. Well done, everybody. Um, that is a lovely one, so I'm glad you got that one right. Two, uh, the answer for this one is bog asphodel, Narthesium ossifragum. So if you're interested, ossifragum means bone breaker because farmers used to assume that when their sheep fed on it and their bones broke, it was because of the bog asphodel, but actually it's because it grows in low calcium areas. So there you go, it's a fun fact. Ossifragum. So question three, bog myrtle. Um, that's Myriaceae. So um, that's uh, uh, the Myrica family, which is where you know the genus comes from as well. So that's a good one to know. Only 29% got it. What's the name of this plant? It's bog rosemary, Andromeda polyfolia. Um, question five. We've got uh, cotton grass, the common cotton grass, Eriophorum angustifolium, because it's got a bunch of the inflorescences, inflorescences at the top. So there's a, there's multiple um, flowers there. So on to question six. What's the name of this plant? This lovely fern. It's the maidenhair spleenwort, Asplenium trichomanes. 
scurrying amongst the, the mosses on a cliff base in its native habitats. Question seven, which is not a common name for this plant. Uh, pink bittercress. So 41% of you got that. I hadn't heard milkmaids either, but I'd heard the other ones. So I, I, I'm not sure I would have got that one right, to be honest. Uh, for this one, it's quite a tricky one, I think, in some ways. It's early marsh orchid, Dactylorhiza incarnata. Um, orchids take an awful lot of practice, I think. Okay, right, and on to nine, purple loosestrife. Which family is purple loosestrife from? And it's the Lythraceae. And the bee is from Bombus, something or other, I assume. So question 10, which species is sphagnum? And it's the one that's growing, it looks like drowned kittens in the in the pool. So it's sphagnum cuspidatum, feathery bog moss. And 71% of you got that, which is fantastic. Well done. So I think we're, um, we might be able to see, get the leaderboard for round two, as there weren't so many um, technical uh, problems. Um, so well done, York and Reading were leading after round one. Um, so that that last um, round was definitely for the the botanists who were sort of you know into learning the names, memorizing things, going and seeing them out in the in the field. Um, rather than oh we're just getting sorry I'm just pausing because we're getting some updates on the leaderboard so so there was um a, a a team that performed really well I'm very impressed so we'll we'll Plymouth pairs well done you got 10 out of 10 amazing so that's fantastic uh, so the botany round Plymouth is in very good hands congratulations and they were in third after the first round, so oh. they must be way up on the oh. leaderboard. Yes, they got, they they must got be. seven out of ten in the first round. So watch out, York and Reading. We'll see see where everyone's... Portsmouth were in between on eight. Portsmouth being newbies, snapping at your heels. But but remember, we've got sixteen places uh, for next week. So sixteen teams, the sixteen top teams will go through. So everything to play for. It's the glory, Jonathan. <laughs> it's the glory of winning a round. <laughs> of course. Of course. No, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I think we're just waiting for a few more teams on the Socrative system, which is our quiz system that we're using before we get the full leaderboard. Yeah. Sarah, we'll... sorry, Sarah, Jonathan. sorry to interrupt you. Are you seeing any more? Because I can't see it here. Are you seeing any more chat on the on the YouTube? Oh, that's a good point. I haven't looked. I had to take it off because there's a bit or of a delay. Any comments from you, John? I just mightily impressed by the fact that virtually all of them knew the sphagnums. I think yeah. there's going to be a lot of people watching this at home thinking, who are these people? I'm really <laughs> impressed. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we were always impressed. I, I have to say, I personally find sphagnum a gorgeous, gorgeous genus. Um, and but hard. Was it thirty-five species to learn? It's doable. You've just got to get just like everything. You've just got to put your mind to it. Also, um, talk to the right people. Go out in the field with the right people and off to the right places. Obviously, um, and you not can surprisingly, learn them on the bogs are quite good for sphag. <laughs> you can learn them on the bog. Ah ha ha! Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I work on uh, quite a bit on species translocations and we're um, working with a few people including Josh Stiles who's a big person in BSBI stuff and, and is known to the Botanical University Challenge community and um, we're, we're trying to restore the bogs um, and put species back that are missing some of the rarer things so some of the quite a few of those species that in this round and um, that come up have been bog and heath type species so I did I did know some of them but Others of them, oh, those orchids, find those hard. Don't look at orchids very often. <laughs> okay, I, I can announce that all the teams are on. What we're going to do, because our tech team are, are working hard on, on the scoreboard, um, so what we're going to do is take round three now, then we have a little break, and then 
tension will have risen, we'll have a, a scoreboard for you um, after the break. OK, so here we go with the next round. Thank you. So um, this is uh, just the fun one again. Um, so tick on these just to make sure that you're logging the system. Could I have a peony for your thoughts? I'm just pulling your leg. Put the petal to the metal. Begonia, I'm tired of looking at you. I don't get that one, actually. I don't. Maybe I read it wrong. Uh, can you move any aster? That's a repeat. It did Jonathan, did you do these? That's a repeat of a previous one. Anyway, right, let's move on to the proper questions now that everyone's on the system. So question one, in which plant species were transposable genetic elements first discovered? Was it the snapdragon and Tyrina major, Thalecress, Arabidopsis thaliana, common morning glory, Apomoea, purpurea, rice or rhiza sativa or maize, zea, maize? And if you want, if this helps at all, here's, uh, here's the sort of um, the, the diagram of the, uh, the genetic elements that we're, uh, the transposable genetic elements that we're talking about. So which... Um, major advance in genetics um, was discovered on, on which of these plants. We've got a couple of seconds left. Okay, question two. Which of the following diploid plant species has the smallest number of chromosomes? Is it A, smooth hawk's beard Crepus capillaris, B, purple false brome Brachypodium distachyon, C, ginkgo, ginkgo biloba, D, barley, Hordium vulgari, or e, e, the giant sequoia, sequoia dendron giganteum. So which has the smallest number of chromosomes? A lot of you all know that plants can have multiple, like many, many chromosomes and uh, diploid systems and heteroploid and all sorts of different things. So um, the, uh, the DNA of plants can get extremely complicated, but this one's about the smallest number of chromosomes. And we've got nearly all the teams have entered. Oh, yeah, I don't, don't think we've quite got everyone then. But anyway, question three. The first complete genome sequence for a tree species was made publicly available in 2006. Which species is it? Is it A, black cottonwood, Populus tricarpa, B, redwood, Sequoia sempervirens, C, ginkgo, ginkgo biloba, D, English oak, Quercus roba, or E, quaking aspen, populus tremuloides. So which first complete genome sequence was made publicly available in 2006? And there it is, in case that helps, in case there's anybody that can read gene sequences. <laughs> okay, so I've um, got 10 seconds left on the clock. So if you're playing at home, you might know this one, or you might be Googling it. That's okay if you're playing at home, we'll, we'll let you. So question four, which tree pollen first appeared in abundance in Britain and Ireland after the last glacial maximum? Is it A, pine, Pinus sylvestris, B, birch, Betula species, C, hazel, Corylus avalana, D, elm, Ulmus glabra, or E, oak, Quercus uh, species? So... Uh, you've got a choice there. The reason, actually, if you're interested, why we can't always get it down to species level um, with pollen is that sometimes the the pollen of closely related species is all it looks very very similar. So some of the plants that I work on, the cow wheats that got mentioned earlier, they have sort of overlapping pollen sizes, so you can't always um, distinguish between the two unless you've got extremely big or extremely small pollen grains. So that's that's why we've got genus or species in there. So, okay, on to question five. A typical angiosperm chloroplast genome contains 112 unique functional genes. How many unique functional genes are there in the chloroplast genome of the obligately parasitic species Monotropa uniflora, the ghost plant? A, none, it has lost its chloroplast genome. B, 31. C, 76. D, 112. Or is it E, 120? So the, these obligate parasites are amazing. You can see that it's just completely lost all its green. So it's not photosynthesizing. It's just parasitizing other plants. And um, parasites have a really bad name, but they're actually 
like completely fascinating and macau wheats are heavy parasites so they have these amazing like distinctive um ecological niche they're not all bad things they don't all kill other stuff um so the, the ghost plants are really cool looking one so on to question six the grass species lolium tumulentum is believed to have evolved as a weed during the domestications of cereals. Which of these typical cereal traits does it not share? A, it's an annual. B, it's an inbreeder. C, it forms symbioses with mycorrhizae. D, its seeds are nutritious for humans. Or E, its seed heads are non-shattering. So there's some, you know, I'm sure that's quite obvious which ones aren't the right answer for this one um but you've got to say which which of the typical cereal traits does it not share this uh, picture of lolium tamolentum um which relatively recently uh, evolved during the domestication of cereals okay well there's quite a lot of last minute submissions to this one okay question seven in his classic studies on the genetics in peas, Gregor Mendel studied seven plant traits. To date, the underlying genes have been cloned and identified for four of these. Which of the following has not yet been? Okay, so is it the cotyledon colour, which is yellow-green? Is it the position of flowers, axial or terminal? Is it the seed coat or flower colour, purple slash white? Is it seed shape, round versus wrinkled? Or is it stem length? tall versus dwarf. So which of the seven plant traits that um, were studied by Gregor Mendel have not yet been cloned and identified for the genes? So ha half the time left. And we've only got, oh, we're just getting on. So half of the teams now. So if you've got any last minute answers, you can Stick those in quick, quick, quick. Oh, we'd get everyone just right. Well done, everybody. So question eight, which of these families of tr transcription factor does not occur in plants? Oh, here we go. So it, is it A, it is not the basic helix loop helix. It's B, the, not the basic leucine zipper. C, is it not C2H2 zinc finger? Is it D, homeodomain? Or is it E, nuclear hormone receptor? I am none the wiser on that. I'm an <laughs> environmental scientist by training and a conservation ecologist in the field. And I have no idea. So you, you, you don't, don't use any of my body language to indicate which one might be correct. I've got about 10 seconds left on the clock. Looks like a lot of the teams don't know either because, <laughs> oh no, we're creeping up now. That's good. So last last few seconds. Yeah, okay. So question nine, in which geological period did angiosperms first appear? Is it A, the Jurassic, B, the Cretaceous, C, the Triassic, D, the Permian, or E, e Carboniferous? So these are all geological periods. And the angiosperms first appeared, of course, they weren't the first plants, um, but which of those geological periods did the angiosperms first evolve and appear in our fossil record? And if I'm not mistaken, that picture that came up, um, is that ginkgo or something like that, ginkgo biloba, that's come up in a couple of the um, Yeah, that's a ginkgo. It's Lovely. not an angiosperm. <laughs> no. <laughs> So the angiosperms, the ginkgo is not one of the examples. Okay, so question 10. MicroRNAs, mRNAs, are, have been shown to regulate many plant processes. What is the usual size in nucleotides, not meters, of a plant microRNA? So is it 8 to 12 nucleotides, 14 to 18, 20 to 24, 26 to 30, or 32 to 36. So how big in nucleotides are um, micro RNAs in plants, that is? So there's um, 10 seconds left on the clock. And we're getting 
We're almost there with all the teams submitting answers. That's great. And that was the last question of that round. It's quite a technical round, as, as you can as you saw. So um, like I said, that it's not my strong point, all the sort of physiology and molecular stuff. I'm very much a field-based person and working on conservation. Not to say that it's not important. I'm quite in awe of people that do the all the lab-based stuff. Um, but yeah, so ho hopefully you didn't find that too bad. Um, and I think, uh, was the plan to go have a little break or do I need to buy some more time for the tech team? We can have a quick look at the leaderboard, which seems to be updated as we go. Excellent. In first place, we've got York. Second, we've got this is after round two, yeah, not after this of the ones that have just been put in. Uh, in second, we've got Plymouth. Third is Cambridge. Fourth is Bristol. Equally with Edge Hill, Reading, and Trinity. And then we're down to uh, fifth. How many we've we got in fifth? We've got three in fifth. Three, we've got yeah. Galway, Lancaster, and Portsmouth. So yeah, that the even down at fifth, they're getting twelve. So well over 50% and the, the top team York are on 18. Yeah, fantastic. Well done, everybody. Um, congratulations to York, who are the leaders after round two. Um, so you maintain, you're being quite consistent, aren't you, at York? So that's great. Um, if you're not sure where we're getting the leaderboard from, there's a link in the YouTube stream, so you can click on that. That's been put in there, so you can um, have a look at the, the most recent update through that link. Okay, so... Um, John, are we are we going for a little break? Give everyone a chance to decompress for a minute. That's what we've got on the schedule, but it'd yeah. be nice to... Uh... I've, no, I've, I've, I think we're going to have some answers. We haven't done the answers. Oh, yes, sorry, sorry. Answers, sorry. Yeah. Two seconds, we'll give you the answers to round mm -hmm. three. We, we'll keep you in suspense. We won't give you the leaderboard until after the break. So we're going to have the answers, and then we'll take the break, 15-minute break. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't don't ask me to give you the answers <laughs> without the, the official line in front of me. I can't volunteer any of those answers, I don't think. Um, yeah, so I'd be interested to hear actually of the teams that, that have entered playing today, how many of you are on uh, plant science type courses? So you might have had a bit of an edge on, on that sort of... Um, uh, that round as opposed to the more sort of ecological conferences at courses where you might have uh, you might have felt a bit more comfortable with pictures of plants rather than things about micro RNA um, but it's all part of the uh, the botanical world and how we understand plants and make sure we keep them healthy and safe and all that sort of thing um, So we're going to do the answers now. We're going to see the correct answers, but we're not going to see the percentages. But hopefully the teams, you'll know which ones um, you answered so you can keep track. So the first one is maize. That's where transposable genetic elements were first discovered. OK, and then on to question two, which has the smallest diploid, um, the smallest number of chromosomes. And it's Crepus capillaris, which is smooth hawk's beard. Question three, which one was uh, the genome made publicly available? It's black cottonwood populus trichocarpa. And question four, um, last glacial maximum, which tree was most abundant? It's birch, my favourite, because that's where the cow wheats grow in birch woodlands. So that's, uh, as you might expect, after a glacial retreat. Um, so um, on to question five and the the chloroplast genome was 31 for the the ghost the ghost be uh, plant monotropa uniflora uh, for lolium to melt uh, it was it evolved um its seeds are nutritious for humans so that's the that's the difference between it and its cereals that it was a, a weed of that, nice and easy to sort out but all the other things are the same uh mendel which ones haven't been um, cloned? And that's the position of flowers, whether they're ax axial or terminal. Question nine, 
this was the one I really struggled with. It's nuclear hormone receptors. I'm none the wiser, I'm afraid, <laughs> but they do not occur in plants. So there we go. Question 10, which geological period? And it's the Cretaceous. That's when angiosperms first appeared. And question 10, microRNAs. They usually 20 to 24 nucleotides. So you can go and tell people that now, but I wouldn't have been able to say uh, to tell you before this round. Great. Okay. Thank you very much, tech team, for putting that together. We're going to have a break now while we all go and lie in a dark room for a little bit. It's caught just about quarter past three. Um, so Jonathan and John, I think it was 15 minutes for the break, wasn't it? And we can come back at half past three um to resume for the, the final two rounds of the of the quiz today. Absolutely. Yeah, we shall come back. We shall have the leaderboard. We might eat, we're actually keeping work quite well to time despite a glitch earlier. So we may well bring on a few teams just to have a little chat. Um, That's but because take we're a break. professionals. Yeah. Have a break, everybody. We'll see you in quarter of an hour.
Welcome back to Botanical University Challenge. We've just seen three exciting rounds. The scoreboard's been all over the place. Uh, we're going to share the scoreboard with you in a moment, um, and we're going to bring in a few of the teams to have a, a bit of a chat, so we'll, we'll make that clear. So I'm going to share my screen, which hopefully will have the updated scoreboard on it. There it is. OK, so at the top of the leaderboard after round three, we've got University of York on 24. Um, then two uh, two teams close behind on 22, Cambridge and the University of Plymouth. So we're going to bring those three teams on in, in a little while. Uh, moving down um, the scoreboard, remember the top 16 are the ones that will go through to next week. We've got Reading, we've got Trinity College Dublin, uh, Bristol, Galway, Aberdeen, Edge Hill University of Oxford. I haven't done my totting up here to find out where the where the cutoff point is. So let's count from the top again, and then I'll let someone else talk. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to Aberdeen, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm making Imperial College number 16, but notice Imperial College is on 13. Well done, serial killers. Uh, you've been killing it. Uh, but we have other teams on 13. We have we have some ties going on. And if we've got ties at the end of the contest, um, I think we've got a cunning plan um, to deal with that. So um, there is the scoreboard. Congratulations to all of you. Um, those of you who have done really well at the top, those of you um, in the middle, and those of you uh, closer to, to, to the bottom, you're all brilliant. Um, there were a lot of tricky questions there. Um, and I'm just going to ask Sarah and maybe John to say a few words, and then we'll bring on uh, York, Cambridge and, and Plymouth, uh, and then maybe a couple of other of the, the new teams as well, um, just for a little bit of a chat. So anything to add, John or Sarah? Yeah, I just, uh, I'm really, really impressed. Well done, everybody. I know it. a lot of the questions have been really hard. So um, yeah, fantastic job so far. Best look for the next two rounds. Um, the the top three York Cambridge and Plymouth congratulations we're going to get you on in a minute I think but um yeah just uh they're amazing scores so well done John do you want to say something well yeah just to reiterate that because we've had three very varied rounds haven't we so to be getting sort of twenty four out of thirty when we've had Valentine's questions we've had plant ID questions and then we've had sort of genetics and biochemistry questions that's been quite wide ranging in botanical knowledge and just to be getting six wrong out of across all of that is pretty impressive and I should say I'm a, a York graduate so I'm kind of pleased to see York uh, at the top but I am completely impartial and yeah, it's a long time since I was at York completely nice we, are, to see awesome. we are because we've actually got <laughs> links between us to the top four at least and in fact also Trinity we have an external examiner here for that, that's at, at Trinity so I think without further ado um, can we um, ask York Cambridge and Plymouth to come on to say a few words about how they've found the first three rounds Oh, I'll, I'll stop sharing. I think that's probably required. There we are. There's York. Hello. Give you're, us a you're wave. You're muted, York. So, John, do you want to ask some questions? Well, when they, we need to unmute them or they, somebody needs yeah, to unmute Yeah, if you could unmute, unmute so yourself. Can... Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so how are you you're feeling? You're all smiling. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good fun. And you're feeling it's confident fun. for the rest of the quiz? You're going to maintain your lead? I don't know. It depends on <laughs> what's coming next. <laughs> uh, are can you, are I you ask, surprised? I mean, yeah, no, so I'll carry on. So I was going to say, are you surprised to be at the leaderboard or are you feeling pretty confident going in? Um, I, mean, I had no idea what to expect, really. So I'm quite pleased. Yeah. I think yeah. we've got quite very background in terms of some of us are geneticists some of us are kind of more id based so we cover quite a lot of ground cool that's good and actually that helps with that varied the varied rounds doesn't it yeah so yeah alex i think that's a good point yeah yeah maybe at this i'd just like to say to those those teams that perhaps haven't done quite as well as they'd hope that that is a you know particularly some of you are only starting uh, on the contest for the first time that actually you know don't be don't be downhearted um you know try 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 again and and look around for 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 a varied team 
um, for, for the future. Assists. But, but that this helps. is fantastic. <laughs> These your top three teams really, really take my hat off to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, well done. And all the best for the for the for the re remaining round. So thank you very much. Give us another wave. And then I'd like to bring on um, a couple of the teams that are um, in 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 the in the running for the for for, for going through to next week. So that's um, Oxford Brooks, and also the Botanics from um, uh, the yeah. That's yeah, right. there we are. Most of the yeah, hey, ragworts, and, and and even I know that you're not waving a ragwort there. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, not wrong time of year to get a ragwort. <laughs> yeah, and and may I just say, Moss Hysteria, I have to say, what a lovely name. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, how how were, how were the first three rounds? Unmute yourself and tell tell us some tell us some tell us how you found the first rounds. Obviously, and um, there was a lot of guessing. <laughs> not gonna lie about that <laughs> that's but, honest <laughs> but to be fair when we guessed we got it wrong when we actually sort of knew that was when we got... <laughs> so we're, we're unlucky with our guesses but we've got some sort of knowledge there <laughs> clearly Definitely. excellent yeah, yeah and, and and well done i mean first timers as well it's really 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 good and moss hysteria anything to add Oh, we're just we're having a great time. Just waiting for the uh, the tropical round or the Southeast Asia round. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving anything away. I'm not giving anything away. I was just involved in 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 checking some of the questions this year, and I'm clear didn't quite get that all right. But um, never mind. Uh, good. Any more? To, any more for any more before we we launch into round four? No, I think probably just want to get on with it. Don't yeah, we? let's get on uh, with the quiz. Good. The Let's do it. Well, thank you very much. Good luck, well, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'll leave it to 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 Sarah and Hannah um, to move on. Then is that right? Yeah. Good. See you at the end of of round four. So for this round, the time is now going to twenty seconds. So you've got to be extra quick. Um, the the time will start once I've finished asking the question. For the first one, this is just for fun again. So I think everyone's answered, but my favourite one of these ones was what what up sucker? That's my favourite. I'm not going to read the others. And we can go on to the proper questions. Okay, so question one. The caterpillar of the moth, Comedia regent baccarae, usually called the red worm, is associated with which crop plant? Cotton, Gossypium species, pineapple, Ananus camosus, Maize, zea maize, agave, which is agave the genus, or potato, solanum tuberosum. And you've got 20 seconds this time. So which crop plant is the red worm, which is actually a moth, uh, associated with? So see see if you can do some better guesswork if you were guessing before and it wasn't getting very far and you didn't know the answer. Okay, so question two. The persimmon and Sharon fruit, Diospyra species, are members of what plant family? Is it the Solanaceae, the Phagaceae, the Rutaceae, Malvaceae, or Abinaceae? So which one, which of these families is the persimmon and Sharon fruit from? You might, I'm not sure where, how easy it would be to guess that one. You could guess that one, I suppose, if you knew some of them weren't definitely the case. Okay, so 20 seconds doesn't feel like very long, does it now? So question three, the product Kopi Luwak is produced from fermented, partly digested berries of which crop plant? Is it cocoa, theobroma, cacao? Is it tea? Camellia sinensis, is it coffee, coffea species, is it vanilla, vanilla planifolia, or is it tonka beans, dipteryx odorata? The clock started already. Quick, you've only got 10 seconds. So which which fermentation product has come from which of these plants? Okay, that's question four. The tropical fruit, Sorsop anona muricata, is the same plant family as which other tropical fruit? Is it the same family as the American pawpaw, Asamina trilob, mango, 
Mangifera indica, star fruit, Avaroa carambola, pineapple, Ananus camosus, or mangosteen, Garcinia mangostena. So which of those um, is the same plant family as this tropical fruit? Okay, just a few seconds left. So get your answers in teams. Oh, oh, yeah, just about got everybody in. So question five, Saccharum officinarum is one of the most important tropical crops. What is its common name? Is it rice, sugarcane, cassava, mango, or pineapple? Again, this might be a little bit of a process of elimination, botanist best friend. Um, if you know which ones there definitely aren't, then you can strike those off the list and then do it dip for the, the rest of them if you don't know it. I think that, that usually works well for me. Okay, just a couple of seconds left. Great. And then on to question six. Hibiscus is widely grown in the tropics as an ornamental. To which plant family does it belong? Is it the rosaceae, malvaceae, Rutaceae, Ranunculaceae, or Magnoliaceae. And um, this is where, when, when I'm teaching my undergrads and I try and sort of teach at family level rather than just memorizing, memorizing species, this is where actually those sorts of skills come in because, again, you can probably tell it isn't some of those families if you know some of the, the British and Irish versions of those families. Question seven, Arctic tundra is my favorite sort of habitats, which of the following species would you not find growing in the Arctic tundra? Would you not find crowberry in Peachum nigrum, the blueberry, Vaccinium oligonosum, the Cygni island moss, Schistidium antarcticae, lingonberry, Vaccinium vitis idei, or Labrador tea, Rhododendron Greenlandicum? So which of those would you not find in the Arctic tundra? Got a picture of the Arctic tundra there, but there's no clues. Don't worry, <laughs> not close enough, uh, close up enough to to see any plants there that might actually help. So just a couple of seconds left. Question eight: Which of the following plant families are not endemic to Australia? Is it Anarthriaceae, Blanfordiaceae, Cephalotaceae? Is Diosoliaceae or Myrtaceae. Oh, all the, the plant diversity in Australia is incredible. So if you've never been there, I, I was in Perth for a translocations conference. It's just so amazing. All the banksias are just mind blowing. It's brilliant. Um, so yeah, I really recommend going there if you ever can. See the diversity hotspots. Right, question nine. Which of the following countries is said to be named after a plant? Is it A, Brazil, B, Mexico, C, Panama, D, Venezuela, or E, Colombia? So which of those countries is named after a plant? And we have a plant just there in the picture. <laughs> so just five seconds left, not long for, for this round. And we're really ramped up the, the speed of, of response. Right, question 10 for this, the last one in this round. Raolia rubra is a cushion forming plant of New Zealand. Which of the following is the common name for it? Is it the New Zealand cushion plant, vegetable sheep, snow drift, southern idlewise, or woolly daisy? Which of those is the common name? They're all lovely names. We could just adopt some of them if we like them. It's an amazing looking plant. Um, never been to New Zealand. It's next on the list, maybe. So, uh, yeah. Okay, just a couple of seconds. So that concludes round four. It was quick, wasn't it? I hope everybody had a good break because you needed it before that speedy response. Um, what we're going to do in a little bit is go uh, through the answers, uh, but just whilst the tech team get that sorted, um, just wanted to point out that that was um, a, a, you know, a, a really sort of global 
round with lots of things about crops and parasites and things like that. And I know some of you in in the different universities will be studying that sort of thing. So I think it's really interesting to think about how um, the natural ecology of crops and pests and diseases can be adapted. So I'm sure that's like the focus of a lot of your research. And again, when you're talking to people uh, who aren't botanists, sometimes the, those sorts of, you know, the links through food or, you know, agriculture or ethnobotany and that sort of thing is, is really how you can make the link with different people and getting them interested in plants. So Hannah's got the um, the answers ready. So let's have a look. First one was the agave and the agave species. And that's the red worm is a, a real pest of those. The second one, the persimmon and Sharon fruit are from the Ebenacea. And 30% of you got that right. So most people said Solanacea. I probably would have guessed that as well, to be honest. So on to question three. Uh, fermentation is really good for your gut. Uh, it's coffee that's been fermented to make Kopi Luwak, which actually Kopi is one of the um, sort of the indigenous, indigenous names of coffee. So maybe that was a bit of a clue for people. Um, tropical fruit so sour sop, sorry, is in the same family as American pawpaw. And 64% of you knew that, maybe from the picture. That helped. Um, Saccharum officinarum is also known as sugar cane, of course, and 100% of you got that. Well done. I think I would have got that one right. <laughs> uh, I'm probably the, the, the lowest point of, of botanical knowledge in this uh, quiz, I think. So question six, hibiscus is from the Malvaceae, so the, the Mallow family. So you might have known that, been able to guess that from the flower structure. Question seven, which one would you not find? And it's the the um the one that's called Antarctica. It so was in the can, name, wasn't it? Yes, so the clue was in the name, and it's the only one I hadn't heard of actually as well. So I would I would have got that one right. Question eight: Which families are not endemic to Australia? And it is, of course, the Metaceae, because Metaceae are just flipping everywhere. Um, all the other ones are the really hard ones to say because I've never heard of them before. So <laughs> okay, so on to question nine. Uh, which country is named after a plant? And it is Brazil. Uh, so 38% of you got that right. So that it looks like people are sort of hedging their bets maybe because they're, they're fairly evenly split across the different answers. So people didn't know that probably. Okay, on to the last question. Raulia rubra is also known as vegetable sheep, which doesn't make any sense at all. It just sounds like random words put together, but 50% of you knew that. So fantastic. And um, so at the end of that round, you'll probably have teams will probably have a, a good idea how you're doing uh, in terms of the leaderboard. Um, if people on the YouTube channel are playing along, let us know whether you're keeping score and we'll shout you out over, you know, after the, the next round. Um, and are, are we able to be John and Jonathan? We're not quite there yet, are we, for the... Um, I'm just waiting or, for a signal to come through. It, it takes okay. a while to get yes. this sorted. So our tech team are yeah, busy. Last updating. updated 27 minutes ago, so I think we're not there yet. We're not, not, not there quite yet. there with the update, but uh... yeah. Yeah. Thirty-three points is. So take it or leave it. Thirty-three points is the top score we're being told in our ears. So uh, University of York, take it or leave it, has got 33 so far. So we're just waiting for the other schools oh, to Another be strong round. Another very strong round. Yeah, well done. Really going for it. Excellent. Yeah. So, um, and Anything I'm... more for us? Thank you. So we've got on the, on the chat on YouTube, Stephen Dodsworth said that was a fun round. I'm not sure what your idea of fun is, whether it's a bit <laughs> different to mine, but I'm glad you're enjoying it, Stephen. <laughs> uh, Amanda is currently drinking hibiscus tea, so well done. You're obviously in the zone for the time Rather than the challenge. tequila with the first question. <laughs> I love the idea you thought it was a pest. It's the red worm in the bottle. You don't oh, drink it? enough oh right, sorry. <laughs> oh, I just assumed it was a pest. Right, okay. I just assume moths, plants, not a good thing. <laughs> Right, okay, should have known that. Um, 
from my university drinking days. Don't don't yeah. touch the stuff anymore. But <laughs> or civic cat coffee either. Oh right, yeah, it's like the fermentation one. Yeah, that yes, was that okay. one. Yeah, yeah. So I don't fancy that one it. either. Do you? <laughs> no, it's very expensive as well. Apparently. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, and it's force fed to them these days, isn't it? So, is so it? Not, oh, that's yeah, not very so it's nice. Yeah, it's not a nice thing. Yeah, that's not a good thing. We won't encourage that then. Uh, just drink normal coffee, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and normal tequila. <laughs> yeah. We're getting very close. As you said, the um, the timer down to 20 seconds really, really heats up the pace, doesn't it? Yeah. So um, it, I mean, the same just... will be the case with the last. This is the final round coming up. So this is the deciding round. So I think we're getting the scoreboard in, 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 in uh, a few tens of seconds. So we'll hang on to, to see that before we move into the final round. Great. Okay. Nope, that's fine. The tech team really working, uh, doing an amazing job here. We'll, we'll be doing votes of thanks at the end, and uh, it's it's great. I'm just sitting here doing almost nothing <laughs> with my one screen, trying to follow what's going on. Um, and we've got the YouTube up on the screen, but there's a delay with the YouTube, so that's slightly disconcerting when you look up and see what's happened a few seconds ago. Well, our favourite zoologist, Zoology Ben, says he's learning a lot. So that's lovely. That's really yeah. good to hear. I mean, I think we would say, yeah, Botanical University Challenge, it started with the quiz um, and the learning thing and the breadth is is really, really, really important. And, and that's something that we try to do. We work hard with the question team. Again, you'll see those in the at the end um, who, who works on the questions and, and they do their best to get this diversity of questions. And it seems to be paying off because, uh, you know, the, the teams that have got the, the mix um, of, of, of skills do well. We're also very keen, of course, on our um, uh, second sort of major aim for Botanical University Challenge, which is to help connect uh, plant aware students across um, uh, England, Wales, Scotland, uh, and Ireland. Um, yeah, you're not alone, and, botanists. <laughs> and, and and that's something that the Oxford Festival in in August is really going to to major on. So I do hope all our participants today will be able to will be able to attend to attend that. Okay, where are we? No, no, we're almost there. I, I'm very glad it's not me that's having to do this because uh, you know that it's quite a quite an intense thing to have to, to sort out the the marks on the leaderboard. Yes, and I'm sure actually the teams are having a well earned just sort of downtime. So you've got to yeah, like make the most of it. Yeah. Yeah. Treat your brains like you're your botanical athletes. You've got to recover in the in the interim between the rounds, get ready for the next one. Exactly. If they're like me, they're nervously pressing refresh on the leaderboard uh, page. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe don't do that, teams. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's sort of it's sort of live updating as it goes. Yeah, it? just just breathe, go with it. You know, what will be will be. We'll read out the leaderboard for you when it's it's ready <laughs> so um jonathan is this the this is the biggest uh botanical university challenge isn't it Absol absolutely yes um and no question about it and and um it's interesting because we get a lot of teams coming in towards the deadline so we're never quite sure what we're doing with 25 teams we had last year um and when we got to 24 I, th I was thinking yeah that's fine 24 it's close to 25 and then we eventually got to 28 and I think it's I I, I see it as a huge vote of, of, of confidence in what we're doing and that we're really you know and we've we've heard from the comments that the students find it fun as well as educational and of course it's part of um the the botanical university challenge which includes our, our, bot our student botanical festivals which we which we've started um and I'm uh, really looking forward to meeting our students uh, in, in Oxford later in the year. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and do you want to do a bit of a plug for the the Time magazine? Because I know I do. a lot of the teams will I know do about want to it do already. A, uh, sorry, I've I've moved off the screen, so I'm coming. Um, the Times. Yes. Yep. Okay. So we started. It's a, a student led. Um, and supported by some of the planning team newsletter, which is called The Times, and it's obviously because it's botanical, spelled T-H-Y-M-E-S. It comes out more or less every three months, about four times a year, and it includes um, articles about Botanical University Challenge, articles by 
um, students have participated, teams have, have, have been in it. Um, it has a regular... In okay. It has a, a regular uh, interview with a botanist. And I do encourage you, actually, those of you uh, in the audience and students to, to go to the YouTube channel um, uh, because um, our the interviews that we do with, with botanists um, are there. Um, and uh, Lindsay Turnbull from, from University of Oxford did a, a lovely interview with me. She's a plant ecologist um, and it's it's a great interview um, and um, I, I encourage you to have a look at our YouTube channel because we're we're putting as many videos as we can uh, on there. Um, obviously, the Botanical University Challenge videos are there for all time. So this this live stream will be there. Um, uh, but also we have we have other videos. We've got um, the interviews and, and, and so on there. Um, I think I'm getting the message that we should go on to the next round that the scoreboard isn't quite ready. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. No, that's OK. It's, 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 it needs to be right. There's no point of showing a scoreboard mm -hmm. that's wrong. Uh, OK, it does. It does bring the, um, the tension up a little bit, but we're now moving into the final round. So uh, all teams um, do whatever you have to do. I was going to say gird your loins. I don't I won't say that, <laughs> but do what you have to do and um, and, and good luck. OK, let's sage against the machine. That's my favourite one from this one today for, for, for this round for the fun. And so we're all on. So we'll go with the proper question. So question one, Belgian bodies are rich in lipids, sugars and proteins. They are believed to have evolved in a symbiotic relationship with ants. In which plants are they usually found? The Cecropia, Acacia, Eucalyptus, Fig or Acer? So which plants? You've got a load of different um, genera, genuses, um, and you've been asked to say which of these um, Belgian bodies have been found in these plants. Ants are our friends, generally, for botanists, I think, dispersals of seeds and all these sorts of things. But all the teams answering that, fantastic. So question two. Insects in the superfamily Chalcidoides, sorry, are important pollinators of what group of plants? Cocoa and its relatives, the Abroma species, Arums, Fig, Fica species, the bottle brush tree, Callistemon species, or Aspidestra. So which of those um pollinated by this superfamily of, of invertebrates? 10 seconds left. This is where you need the ecologists, I think, with the, the pollinators and things like that, the community people. Okay, question three. What are the chief pollinators of honeysuckle, Lanicera periclinum? Sorry, brutalizing that one. So bees, butterflies, night flying moths, bats, or flies. So which are the chief pollinators of honeysuckle? There we go. I've got a honeysuckle. I've got a couple of honeysuckles in my garden. They hardly ever flower. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. If somebody could message me and just tell me what I'm doing wrong with my honeysuckles, that would be great. So a couple of question uh, seconds left and then, right, move on to question four. Which day flying moths gain their toxicity from compounds present in leaves of bird's foot trefoil, lotus cuniculatus? Is it burnet moths? Zygaena so species, cinnabar moths, Tyria jacobea, vapor moths, Origyria antiqua, uh, hummingbird hawk moths, Macroglossum stellatorum, or garden tiger moths, Arctica caja or caja, however you say it. So there's your there's your lotus cuniculatus, bird's foot trefoil. You've got ten seconds left to say which uh, moths get their toxicity from the leaves of bird's foot trefoil. Okay, on to question five. Nepanthes raja, the king pitcher plant, is said to have a symbiotic relationship with tree shrews, but where is it endemic? Papua New Guinea, the Philippines, Thailand, the Solomon Islands, or Borneo? So which of those places is the, the king pitcher plant um, uh, endemic to? look amazing the, the panthes are a, such a cool group uh, such a cool genus 
three seconds left before we go on. And now question six. The boll weevil, Anthonomus grandis, is a significant pest of what species of plant? Is it A, potato, Solanum tuberosum, B, tomato, Solanum lycopersicum, C, sugar maple, Aces tacarum, D, rice, Oryza sativa, or E, cotton, Gossypium species? So which weevil is a significant pest? We are talking about pests now. Nothing that's <laughs> we're supposed to be ingesting to get intoxicated this time. So this weevil is a pest of which of those, uh, which species? A couple of seconds left. Oh, we didn't quite get everyone answering that one. But anyway, question seven. Eliasomes are fleshy structures found on the seeds of many plants, including the cowweeds. Uh, they are thought to be involved in seed dispersal by ants. Which of the following groups do not produce eliasomes? Is it Brassica, Cordidalis, Hyacinthus, Myrtus, or Viola? So yeah, my my favourite, uh, my cow wheats are um, Melampyrums. They have an eliasome and the, the wood ants carry them around and bite off the eliasome. In the meantime, they've moved the seed away from the parent plant. It's really, really cool to see. And the seeds look like the ant eggs as well. So it's like there's, there's uh, really cool stuff going on there. So, right. Question eight. Wild bananas are pollinated by what type of animals? Is it A, hummingbirds, B, wasps, C, moths, D, bees, or E, bats? So we've got 20 seconds on the clock. Wild bananas are pollinated by which of those? Hummingbirds, wasps, moths, bees, or bats? And of course, all of them will pollinate something, but are they pollinating wild bananas? Just about getting everyone in. So question nine, the death's head hawk moth, Acherontia atropis, is one of the largest species of moths in the British Isles. On what plant do its caterpillars most commonly feed? Is it A, oak, Quercus, B, brassicas, C, potato, Solanum tuberosum, D, elm, the ulma species, or E, sycamore, Acer pseudoplatinus? So which um, plant do the caterpillars of the death's head hawk moth feed on? Death's head, because I think of the the thing the bit on the is it the thorax or oh, I'm now showing my ignorance about moths. Yeah, that's the thank you. <laughs> that's where the death's head bit is. Okay. Last question of the knockout round, question 10. Oak apples are produced by oak trees parasitized by gall wasps. Why were oak apples imported from the Middle East to the British Isles in large quantities in the 1840s? Was it A to make glue? B, to make ink, C, to produce a food preservative, D, to make gunpowder, or E, to adulterate tea. So why were people in the 1840s importing oak galls in, in huge quantities? And there they are. If you've never seen, galls are so amazing. Like but These ones are sort of quite spherical, as you can see, but some of them are like really intricate structures. So they're, they're really amazing things to find on a tree. Okay. So that was our final round. Um, I hope you I hope you felt that was all right. It was another fast one, wasn't it? Um, I don't. My brain can't keep up, and I'm not even answering the questions. So I'm in awe of everybody that's uh, managing to get their answers in for for these questions. Um, we can go to we can go to the leaderboard. Yeah, good round for the entomologists. I'm seeing in a chat window, um, and I'll just. I've got the leaderboard and if I'm correct, this isn't from the last round because it hasn't been updated yet. It's from round the end of round four. So um, University of York doing pretty amazing still. So take it or leave it uh, on 33. So still ahead. And Cambridge Vax Buttercups uh, are joint second still with University of Plymouth. Plymouth pairs on 30 points each. Jonathan, do you want to come in there? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, let me have a look um, myself and and see. Um, I'm just hang on. I just have to find it. Yeah, I got it. Um, yes. So I'm just going to count down. Yeah, I mean, other speakers. Half, half, half from Portsmouth. 
I'm just going to count down. Uh, two, three, right, eight. So five, what Jonathan's six, doing seven, is counting eight, down 10, 11, 12, to work 11, out who, at the moment, 16, at the end of round four at least. 14, six. I'm just looking to see if we've got a tie at the end, and we may okay. well have a tie. Not massive, not, not a huge number at, at, at the bottom, but we have got a tie. Um, and we've got some that are oh so close. Um, so it's nail biting. But this is end of round four. So mm -hmm. um, we've still got round five to add in here. But we've got, um, uh, well, we've got 33 at the top, University of York, take it or leave it. And then at around 16, I'll count again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, nineteen. Then is the is, is at the moment at the end of round four is the threshold for um, the sixteen top teams, and we've got two teams there at the moment. We've got Harper Adams, Harper Hemlocks, and Portsmouth. The Portatoes on nineteen. Of course, this is the end of round four, but well done because you are in the you would be um, uh, amongst the top sixteen. Um, we've got okay, then yeah. some eighteen points, really close. So Q. Lancaster, Oxford, Brooks, very close, um, and 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 others as well. the the whole score The whole scoreboard is, is is pretty close, really. I have to say, everyone's in double figures. Um, okay, thirty three is our top mark, but uh, you've all done really well. Um, mm -hmm. um, and the, the the final round is the one is the one will tell. Um, but I hope you've really, and I'm sure from what you've said that you've you all enjoyed yourselves. And we're just waiting now. Um, uh, to 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 see what the uh, round five, what difference round five makes to, to the think, situation. I think we might be able to go, yes, to the answers. Yeah. So let's go through these and then the teams will, might have an idea of how they've done. Uh, so for question one, the correct answer uh, was the acacias, which are well known as having those um, uh, symbioses with ants. Um, on to question two. Which of the superfamily is important pollinators? And it's the figs. Again, figs are well known for needing uh, pollinator by invertebrates. So 86% um, uh, of, of you got that right. So well done. So the honeysuckle um, teeth pollinators are, of course, night flying moths. And that's why the scent, the perfume is so lovely from the flowers in the evening and overnight. Um, so 82% of you got that right. Good stuff. Uh, day flying moths gain their toxicity. Which ones of these? And it's the burnet moth. So a lot of those moths that are named there have really amazing looking caterpillars. The burnet moths um, are also sort of red and black as adults. So 43% uh, of you knew that one. Congratulations. Nepanthes raja, the king picture plant. Look at that incredible specimen photo. It's from Borneo and 75% of you knew that. Well done. I did not know about the tree shrew thing though, so we're all learning. Uh, question six. Um, a pest of what species of plant this boll weevil? And it is the it's cotton. So uh, the weevils are a pest of cotton. Of course that's a huge commercial crop. Uh, so economic pest uh, from that boll weevil. So to question seven. Lysomes that I could support you're out for ages. It's the brassicas which don't produce a lysomes. Of course, brassicas have four petal uh, flowers and little sort of uh, pod things, and yeah, the other ones all have lysomes. Okay, question eight: Wild bananas are pollinated by bats. That's fantastic. Sixty-four percent of you knew that. On to question nine: The death's head hawk moth um, is uh, it's Caterpillars most commonly feed on potato solanum tuberosum. This two percent of you knew that, so I think there's a bit of bet hedging there going on. There's a bit of a spread across the different answers, and then the final one on the oak gall. Why were people in the 1840s uh, bring them in? And it's to make ink. So one of the many uses of plants that we've seen in this final round. Right. Thank you, Hannah, for showing us the answers. Um. So I think what we what we can do now, well, should we take a look at the chat on the YouTube um, just to make sure that the leaderboard is right? So, yeah, the, well, there's lots of James Booker knows his stuff about tannins and galls and inks. So that's good. Great. We've got lots of lovely comments on the on the chat um, encouraging people. So um, 
somebody saying that they're following along at home and they got 42 points. You're a botanical genius. So congratulations, you. Um, but yeah, there's lots of things. I didn't get that many and I wrote many of the questions. <laughs> I wouldn't have got anywhere near that many. So well done. Yeah, we haven't got your name on that one, but um, yeah, well done that person. Um, and yeah, it's really nice to see all the different comments cheering the different teams on. So I hope if you're on a team, I hope you've seen the comment that's directed at you from your um, your supporters. Um, okay. Did you see the acacia thing in the news recently? The first question in that round is no. that there's a, an invasive species of ant is pushing out the symbiotic one in bulls on acacias across large parts of Africa, which mean, and these don't buy elephants' trunks. So all of a sudden, elephants can now graze acacias. And it's, uh, the, the, this tiny little ant that just, just pushed out, the, the endemic ant, is having massive knock-on cascade effects through the ecology of the entire African savannas. It's incredible. Wow. So these these plant and ant interactions are hugely important for all the wildlife that you see in the uh, the David Attenborough programs. It all comes down to the sort of plant ant interactions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gosh, that's amazing. I hadn't heard of that. Um, yeah, it is amazing all the, the knock on effects when you lose something from a system or it gets replaced. Um, yeah. So, um, I think. Uh, we we want to wait and make sure that the leaderboard is um, obviously correct because this is the final scores coming in. Um, yes. Yeah, um, I mean we. <sighs> the uh, there's some chat in the Zoom meeting that all the teams and you know us as the crew are are in. So Leaf Laugh and Love at um, University of Edinburgh have said um happy valentine's day everyone so I like that thank you very much <laughs> um well, we've, anna's got some competition for botanical puns yeah. <laughs> um yeah the the hardest thing i've had to do with botanical university challenge was actually reading the limericks so when we <laughs> the limerick competition had to yeah. read the limericks out um, and I joined from our, at, at John Moores University, we've got a building called the Student Life Building, and I was teaching in there after our meeting. And then all of a sudden, Jonathan said, oh, can you just read some limericks out? And there's the students from all over the university sat around me listening to me <laughs> reading limericks about Oroban Casey or whatever it was. So, thanks. Um, thanks for mentioning that, because um, <laughs> we, if we haven't already, we'll make sure the links, I mean, the, the links to the limerick competition and the team name competition are on, on, on Twitter, whatever it's called now. Um, we'll make sure that they're on the uh, the website because, um, and that will stay open for, 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 the, for, for the next couple of weeks while we go through the next rounds. Um, so do have a do have a look. Look at the YouTube channel because we've got the video that Sarah just mentioned, where some of us are reading out these um, these limericks, and I think the seventeen or uh, seventeen limericks, I think, and and, and they're fantastic. Um, and uh, yeah, you can vote for your top three. The same with the lovely team names. Um, I think it's becoming a great tradition that that uh, teams are are putting together these lovely names, and this year for the first time, the limericks as well. So uh, that's that's a, an extra. An, an extra attraction yeah so apologies if i read your limerick because i would have butchered it probably <laughs> mm -hmm. uh we had to have a few goes it's fair to say at some of them didn't we jonathan yep we did we did <laughs> but, um and you can do the limerick competition without having to listen to the video but um, i quite enjoyed putting it together so um so thanks a lot to the teams who did that and and uh, yeah look out next year but you know who knows what what innovation we'll have um next year we're just you know we, it's more more and more yeah so that if you if you go on and look at the limericks it'll keep you going until next week when the the next round is so 16 are going through today from the the 28 if you don't go through then you know it you can maybe enter the limerick competition <laughs> uh, for next year but definitely enter properly again and you just need to uh, buy john and jonathan's book and and swat up on some plants that are difficult and get a molecular biologist on your team i think that's the the take-home messages from today uh, and they're romantic oh yes yeah well it would yeah if you're romantic it might not fall on valentine's next, <laughs> next year they might so. <laughs> So 
also, um, I wonder whether the teams who are on the call, I wonder, I wonder if you have a, an idea already what your score is. Now we went over the answers. What you won't know is, of course, how the other teams did. Um, so the leaderboard is shortly to be updated. Um, and then we can go to, well, I'll hand over to somebody else to do the, the official the official bit um, where we read out schools. So I think John and Jonathan. It's, yeah, it's exciting because you can't, it's, it's there, but you don't know if it's going to change. Yeah. Well, it is definitely changing because I can see that there's um, uh, Seb's working on a couple of the teams that are, uh, looking at zero but of course they aren't he's just he's just updating the numbers i have to say personally i find this i, I love obviously i love doing this but i just kind of sit here <laughs> thinking just sort of you know for a perpetual kind of yeah. really, and i'm not doing anything except sitting here and saying a few things but i well, so thank you all the teams for really really yeah, getting on with it and doing yeah. this stuff which is answering the questions my husband um my husband what is watching with my daughter at home. He's not a botanist. Um, he won't mind me saying that. He says this is like Eurovision. It's like botanical Eurovision with the the tension, with the you know people talking in our ears that the audience can't hear, and the scores going in, and then there being, you know, oh, there's a bit of a, a glitch with the scores. It's just like Eurovision. That's what it is. That's where we're aiming for, John. John, it totally is. And and in fact, we've done we've done audience. So questions. the Irish are going to win then. <laughs> Yeah, nil point. <laughs> Nobody's got nil point. Absolutely not. As I say, all double figures. But no, uh, on that point, thank you for that, Sarah, because um, we have done audience questionnaires before afterwards. Um, so, you know, how did you find it? And quite a few of, uh, of our audience say you should be on the television. And, and, and um, OK, um, I, I, I agree, but it would be it's great if anyone. So if anyone's out there in the audience who's got links into any television channel or or, or any 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 media channel um, do get in touch because I think we've got to the stage now with 28 teams and all this excitement that this is, this is really quite something. Yeah. We need a, a man from Scandinavia to stand up and say that all the schools are in and everything was compliant or whatever the, whatever the phrase is. Right. Yeah, I right. think we're, 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 we can go to the leaderboard then. So, John and Jonathan, do you want to go ahead? Well, we can. You're going to share the screen, Jonathan? You, you're muted. Uh, I could say that the top are still York. OK, sorry. Sorry, I was having a look. So, so John, do you want to, to call out and then maybe I can share my screen? Yeah, well, I'm I'm looking at the sort of the screen and it's York at the at top on 42, an amazing 42. Cambridge on 39, closely pressed by the Plymouth Pairs on 38. Then we've got Trinity on 33, Reading on 31, Bristol, Edge Hill, Edinburgh all on 30, Oxford Brooks on 29. It's good to see the new team doing so well. The, uh, yeah, followed by another new team with a Mosty Asteria from Edinburgh Britannics on 28. Do we know what the cutoff level is when we get down to sixteen, Jonathan? I think it's. I think, but I'll need somebody to double check. I think it's here at twenty-five. That's what I was just working out 25. as well, actually. So Five. This, okay, so we've which got is um, yeah, in um, in there. some so close here, in Lancaster, there. so close. But I think, uh, and it, if if you if I can have another verification, I think this is the this is the point. So we've actually got three in the in the tiebreaker here. The three on 25. Aberdeen, Harper Adams and Portsmouth. Yeah, well, Harper were sort of confident with their entomological knowledge that they'd done well in that last round. So looks like yeah. they were right. And, yeah. Yeah. So... Um, it's definitely commiserations here. So close, Lancaster. So close. Mm -hmm. Really well done. Yeah. Um, I think um, let's just go to the top again and then I think John can tell us what our cunning plan is to, to deal with the tiebreaker. Um, more, more, more. I, I think we were going to do was it um, ten questions in five seconds? So anyway, we'll come to that in a minute. But just to go to the top again. So forty-two is the top mark, uh, top score. Fantastic. York, Cambridge, Plymouth, 
um, Trinity College. Um, and actually last year um, in the uh, semis, we had uh, Trinity College, we had Cambridge, we had um, uh, Oxford, uh, remind me, sorry, my brain's gone. Um, We've got lots of teams getting through that I've not got through sort of first rounds before. Is this and correct? Some new teams getting through, which is it's great to see. That is really great. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to stop sharing there, so we can just do a double check. Is that are we all, are we happy with um, with the scoreboard? We're just double checking the scoreboard. Um, if you can get through to to seven and and check that. Uh, because it's it's in real time this and it's absolutely nail biting and we want to make sure that we've got it right so we need to yeah. to to um to check back that the current champions the current champions are down in 14th so they're not they're not so that means that the current we're going to have new champions this year because oxford have not made it through to round 2 whereas oxford brooks have so there'll be big rivalry within the Oxford bars tonight. Local derbies. That's the that's where yeah. it's going now. Oh, they've shot up. Nothing suspicious there at all. So they're now on identical. So they have got through. So it's, it's they still do have the possibility of. Of winning it i get i did wonder about that because they were it's, doing it's quite okay well um we apologize for this it, it's a very tricky thing to do this this updating in real time yeah so probably we were a bit premature i'm uh sorry we're a bit premature with the um with with the with us with the leaderboard so i think we uh we're going to need to wait a couple of minutes to be absolutely sure mm, so we haven't the got the final scores in yet Wait. So yeah, far, I it think... still looks Go like we're going to have a tiebreaker, though. Pardon? Yep. It it does look like there'll be a tiebreaker between. There may not be this time. Okay. Uh, no, well, no, I think there will be. Um, oh no, things moved again. There will. Okay. We almost need a break, don't we, to to do this and then come back. Or Shall we about... go to some of the teams that are up at the top and have a chat with them? That's a good idea. Uh, we'll, I would go with ones the top that we haven't that had already, perhaps. To. So, yes, do that, John. Yeah, Red, Reading, uh, Trinity, Dublin. Yeah, Could Bristol, get up there. Edge Hill, Edge Hill, actually Edge Hill. Yeah, it would be nice to talk to the Edge Hill team. It's nice to see them up there. Can we get the Edge Hill team to turn their cameras on and have a chat? So actually, let's have let's have Edge Hill and Cambridge on. Uh, sorry, Edge, sorry, Edge Hill and Reading on because those are the two teams who've actually played the ever present every one that's run. Um, yeah. So and they 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 I think we're quite confident that they are both in um, the group going through. So Edge Hill and Reading, please, if you can put your cameras on. Hello, Sedge Hill, of course. Sorry, I called you Edge Hill. <laughs> You're Sedge Hill, aren't you? Of course. And Reading, hello. I recognise you too. Um, yeah, do you want to just say a couple of words? They're on mute. So, Sedge Hill, tell us, um, yeah, just give us, you're smiling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, it's nice, um, because we've been doing the BUC since it started. Yeah. So, it's really nice to sort of be able to get this far. We're all third years, so we're coming to the end of our time at Edge Hill. So, it's nice to be able to kind of show what we offer as a university. Yeah, especially yeah. as undergraduates as well, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah all undergrads as well. Oh. Yeah. I have to say that Edge Hill have always put undergrad teams in um, throughout. That's been one of your, that's sort of your mantra. And, and it's really <laughs> lovely to see you. And I'm, it's so good that we've got so many teams and that we've been able then to have this situation where we can put more teams through to next week. 
because last year it was a bit of carnage. Um, we just had the, the two days. And this so spreading it over three means that we've got 16 teams um going through. So Reading, um welcome. Hi. Uh, how 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 was it for you? How was it down in the room? Yeah, it's been really good, thank you. Sorry, can't quite hear. Uh, you're muted. Yeah, sorry, we just had a bit of feedback. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, it's been really good, thank you. Yeah. Good. We can't yeah, say any more than that, but great. Both of you. <laughs> so, and I think this year it's right. We've got three undergrads and and one PhD. Is that right? Okay, yeah, so three undergrads at Reading, it's a, a three undergrads and one PhD. And a girls by the look of things. All undergrads. So lovely, <laughs> lovely to see you. And we thank hope you. to have the full uh, scoreboard soon. But thanks very much. And we'll, we'll see you next week. <laughs> thank you. So, so John, and any other teams? I was wondering. Um, what else we got there? What about. Have we spoken to Trinity? Yeah. Um, what about... I don't think we have spoken to, spoken to Trinity. We have. Yeah, so... So, yeah, Trinity, Trinity Dublin... And there they are. I, I can't see the school boards. Yeah, Hi, Trinity. Are you having a, have you had a good afternoon? Obviously, you'll be pleased, can you? Yeah. Yeah, we've had a great time. Yeah, it's been really interesting to take part. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, for, me too. But... <laughs> yeah. We thought the questions were very diverse and eclectic as well. But obviously not phased by that diversity. Absolutely not, because we have botanists, environmental engineers, and zoologists amongst our team. Yeah, that's great. Perfect. No. Yeah, that does really? seem to be the strategy to go for. So make sure you have a, a a range of different skills, or just all be complete geeks. But failing that, a range of uh, specialism Absolutely. seems to be a good thing. So great, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Right, that's excellent news. We can stop back okay, our I'm, I'm hearing rumours that the final scoreboard is live. Um, I'm going to check it before I do anything else. So it's yeah. still showing York at the top. Followed by Cambridge and Plymouth. Do we know what the cutoff level is? So I I make it that there's three at twenty five that twenty five points. It's Aberdeen, Harper, and Portsmouth on twenty five. Yes. So that's the cutoff. Okay, we've had that in our ear from the man in Scandinavia, or the men in Scandinavia. Um, but yeah, the, the cutoff points is 25, but that takes us to more than 16 teams. And the good the good news for those is that we're not going to make you do a tie break at this point. You're all going to get through to next week. So you're going to have all going to have to go through this torture again next week to <laughs> see if you can make the uh, the semi-finals and, and uh, the, <laughs> beyond that john's putting his yorkshire cynicism <laughs> on that. so but otherwise congratulations well done yeah, well done everybody three. so yeah if you are um, i'll just summarize if that's all right john and jonathan if you are in positions uh one down to 11 on the leaderboard and that means you've got 25 points or more, you are through to the next round. So many congratulations to those teams. And the format next week will be exactly the same as it has been today. So it'll be another five rounds of 10 questions. And it's not Valentine's Day. <laughs> so <laughs> there won't be a round of Valentine's questions. 
Okay, so we want to do some wrapping up notes, don't we, before we send everyone off to a dark room to sniff some smelling salts or whatever you want to do to recover. So, um, John or Jonathan, do you want to go ahead with some of those uh, final words? Yes. I mean, I think probably all the teams now have, 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 are just, you know, they're either smiling or they're thinking oh so close um but uh, yeah I'm, I'm i'm hopeful that you've all had a great time um and you've learned stuff um and you've had some fun um and you all have the chance to join us um next week um to watch to play along or to play um a, as one of the teams and you all have the opportunity to join us for the festival in oxford i'm going to i think ask John, uh, I've got some slides for, for the wrap up and I think probably that's where we go now. We've kept well to time. It's just about half past four. So we'll be able to let you get off and have a cup of tea or a, whatever you want. But I've just got to uh, um, share some slides and get John to do the, the, the vote of thanks unless anyone has any more to say at this stage. Seeing as maybe, one or two teams could, are disappearing I, already, I pardon? think we need, I think seeing as one or two teams are disappearing already, it's important that we get the message out that even if you're dropping out at this stage, you will be invited to the Student Festival of Botany at Oxford in August for three days of botanical fun and exploration as well as the finals. So, yeah, the, the big, yeah, there we are. There's the details of what's happening in the last uh, few days of, of August in the summer. We've got the semi-finals and finals of book. And then, of course, we've got lots of exciting things that have been arranged by last year's winners at the University of Oxford. So all of you who are uh, have taken part today, even if you are sort of one of the sort of lower ranking teams, you've still done brilliantly to sort of have the nerve to come on in, in front of the whole world on YouTube. And uh, your reward will be to see the finals and all sort of your, your accommodation and food will be paid for for this sort of, because it's not often you get sort of conferences paid for. You have to be a fairly senior academic. I never got conferences paid for. So you've you've got uh, three days in in uh, Oxford Queen's College to look forward in in the summer, and there's a whole team of people at Oxford working on organising that. So there'll be lots of exciting things to do, as you can see, lots of things to join in. And here's the sort of uh, the people behind. Uh, today and uh, right through to, to the events in the summer. So the, the top group of people, Merrill is the powerhouse behind uh, books, social media, and does a, an awful lot to, in helping organise it. And she's one of the, 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 the people on the top row, are those of us with very different backgrounds, you can probably work out who write the questions. Uh, and then they're also checked by, uh, by Jonathan and, and Alistair at Reading. But really, it's the people on the top row you've got to, to blame for those sort of frustrating questions that you've had this afternoon. So, Meryl, myself, Helen and, and Nigel. And we're all sort of neutral. We're not affiliated with, with universities. We've all obviously been academics in our time, but we are not currently involved with uh, universities. So you can be rest assured nobody's had a sneaky look at any of the questions. And then on the second row, you'll see the techie team. There's uh, Seb there in Leeds. There's Hannah and, and Jonathan who have been doing all the hard work behind the scenes, uh, making sure that the technology works and you've got your, sort of, uh, uh, your questions on time and the scores. Uh, with one or two glitches, it must be said, but it's a very tricky thing to do. So thanks to the, the techie team. And then down at the bottom are the people who are helping with the sort of funding and organising the, the, the conference uh, in uh, uh, in in August, and then right in the middle is Colin, who's part of the uh, sort of wider sort of support team, and uh, Sven uh, Edge Hill. Colin, uh, I've got this lovely background at the moment where it looks like I'm sat on a, on a tropical beach. Colin actually is. Colin is probably watching us live from the British Virgin Islands. So hi, Colin. Hope you're having a great time. Yeah, right. Lovely. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Yeah. Same time, same Good place. Good luck, everyone. Same, next same time, week. same place. All the best. Bye. Cheers. Thanks, Sarah.